What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Atlantic is waking up. We have two new invests we need to talk to you about. We have Invest 98L, which is in the Eastern Atlantic, and Invest 99L, which is in the Central Tropical Atlantic, both of which are in the main development region and have good chances of tropical development. Here's the latest from those fronts. Invest 98L, we're going to start with that. A broad area of low pressure associated with tropical waves is producing a large large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms near and to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Further development of this low is possible while it moves towards the northwest or west-northwest around 10 miles per hour. A tropical depression could form over the weekend before environmental conditions become unfavorable for development. 60% chance of formation in the next seven days, 40% in the next 48 hours. Here's this one we have going on right here. This is Invest 99L. Uh, Disorganized showers and thunderstorms continue in association with an elongated trough of low pressure 1,000 miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression could form in the next several days while it moves west-northwest across the central tropical Atlantic, once again 40 and 60. However, I've also been paying attention to another area of interest that I've been keeping an eye on. These chances actually have increased a little bit. It was at 20% yesterday. Now it's at 30% chance of formation in the next seven days. A broad area of low pressure could form in the central or western Gulf of Mexico by the beginning of next week. Some slow development of the system is possible thereafter while it moves westward and approaches the western Gulf Coast by the middle of next week. 30% chance of formation, and it looks like parts of Texas, especially coastal Texas from Brownsville towards Corpus Christi, even Houston look like they're going to get some potential impacts. So this is something we absolutely need to monitor. So we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs of what may be going on. These model runs are mainly going to be focused on 98 and 99L, as a lot of the models still really haven't picked up much on this new area of interest that's in the Gulf of Mexico, although the ensembles absolutely have, and we'll show you those as well. So here's the situation we have going on here. Here's the European run we have right here. This is the 0Z Euro. And the 0Z Euro has this thing, orga- these things organizing and developing. 99L looks like it may develop into a tropical depression or low-end tropical storm, according to the European. However, the European also has this tropical wave that's currently 99L heading towards the Antilles, the lesser Antilles, before potentially developing at that point. So... This is five days out, so it's definitely something to pay attention to. However, 98 and 99L, I'd say especially with 98L, after about five to six days, it's not going to have that much of a chance of development as it enters greater wind shear in those areas right there. Next run we're showing you is the CMC, and we're going to go ahead and pull up the 0Z to kind of give you a cross-check reference to this. Here's the 0Z of the CMC right here. The CMC has 99L strengthening potentially up to a Category 1 hurricane before weakening due to dry, uh, to not exactly drier air, but more so the wind shear. And then it has another tropical wave come off of Africa in the next three days and have, have that strengthening potentially up to a hurricane. So that's... Definitely something interesting to pay attention to. However, the 12Z recently came out, and my tropical team on Storms United has alerted me to something because... According to what the 12Z is saying, the western part of 99L is expected to break off according to the Canadian model right here, and it is expected to traverse through the Caribbean, make a hard uh, turn to the north around Cuba, strengthen to a strong tropical storm or Cat 1 hurricane while doing that, make a very close pass to Miami and impact the Bahamas, potentially a high-end Cat 1, low-end Category 2 hurricane right here. And as it's approaching the Carolinas right here while impacting the Bahamas big time. Now, keep in mind, this is the first run we have seen of this. So this is something we need to pay attention to. However, take it with a huge grain of salt. We just wanted to cover this real quickly. But what, now we're going to go ahead and show you what all these systems, it's especially with 98 and 99L, and then that Gulf Wave is working with. Here's what we have. Very, very, very warm global sea temperatures, 28 plus degrees Celsius across the Atlantic right here. More than enough warm water for tropical development all around, especially in the Gulf of Mexico where we're seeing... Temperatures as high as 32 degrees Celsius from Louisiana to Florida. So, ladies and gentlemen, these waters are continuing to warm up, and we need to continue paying attention to these. 
Now we're going to go ahead and next show you the Ocean Heat content we have going on. And the OHC has been absolutely explosive. The Ocean Heat content in the Gulf of Mexico is well over 100 in a lot of these areas, over 150 in the loop current right here, which if any tropical system that develops in the low wind shear, uh, moderately dry air environments of the Gulf of Mexico moves through the loop current and spends enough time on that, it shouldn't have too many problems intensifying unless the storm gets in its own way. So that's what we have going on. Also, especially with this the latest CMC run, the reason I'm too a little concerned about this is because look at how much OHC it has on the approach to Cuba. It has over 175. I'm sure this is maxed out in get over 200 OHC in some of these areas right here, which is nuclear fuel for these systems as they continue to go on. So that's also what's concerning me. Now, again, that CMC run, it's just one run. Take it with a grain of salt. And by the time it even gets to Cuba, um, what day is it? Oh, yeah, it's like seven days out. So I would just keep an eye on it, but don't take it too seriously for now. And then with we go when we go to the wind shear over here, here's what we have going on. Wind shear across the Gulf. Little to none. Wind shear across the Caribbean. There is some over here, but that's expected to fluctuate and weaken over here. Wind shear in the MDR, it is starting to increase a bit, and that's why 98L is ultimately going to basically have five to six days of development before it stops and the shear tears it apart. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moisture for, uh, component uh, to this before we neatly wrap this up in a nice little bow. Here's what we have with the shear forecast. We have increasing shear across the main development region for the next two days. That's expected to fluctuate off and on throughout mo much of the hurricane season, so that's really nothing abnormal or anything like that, even though it's an El Nino year. The, the anomalies in the Atlantic are pretty much destroying whatever the El Nino is bringing right now. So definitely something to watch, but we'll have to pay attention to it. However, starting about 204 hours out, the wind shear does start to decrease in the MDR, starts to decrease in the, uh, in the Caribbean right there, which is why I'm a little concerned about this whole CMC run right here, because there's not very much wind shear to stop this from organizing. If you take a look at the moisture component, yeah, there there is some dry air in the Eastern Caribbean, but by the time it gets there, it's going to have a very robust moist pocket, and it's going to be pretty much through the Western Caribbean Sea right here, and by the time it makes landfall in Cuba, according to the CMC, it's going to have some moist air to work with, so something to monitor for sure, however... Uh, it's still one run, just take it with a grain of salt for now, but the conditions are actually there for development if that other wave breaks off from 99L. So that's our situation we have right there. We're going to go ahead and show you the, some of the ensemble runs. So here's what we have with the European ensemble. It has this tropical wave west of 99L breaking off, potentially impacting the Antilles right here. So And some of them have entering the Caribbean and potentially impacting Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic as a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane before moving out to sea and potentially impacting Bermuda. But that's about it on that front. However, if we go to the Gulf over here, the European Ensemble has been continuing to double down on these scenarios of tropical storm to Category 1. In some cases, Category 2 st uh, strength ensembles are starting to show up. So there is definitely room for growth like that. It's going to depend on how fast the system moves across the Gulf. Because let's say this whole thing crosses the Gulf in about two days. It'll probably strengthen similar to where it is, at least at the max with Hurricane Hannah, where it was a Category 1. But if it spends a little bit longer on that, say it spends three days, three and a half days, then definitely has a lot more room for improvement right there. Keeping you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, so subscribe if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.